somebody to please remind me at uh, 4.45 to stop and uh, we can then discuss uh, our mode of exam. Next week we have first lecture exam. Because there was some discussion in the beginning about open book, open notes, closed book, whatever. Okay. So we we'll discuss that and finalize because then I need to check it. So somebody please remind me at 4.45. So we started uh, looking at semantic analysis with compilation. And we looked at the models, how we are going to create the semantic analyzer and what was coming out was that we want to have certain properties associated with each of the grammar symbols and we are going to call that as an attribute grammar. So let's look at what is the framework for attribute grammar and how we are going to then have an implementation of that. Okay. So this is really, uh, now I am in mean, after syntax analysis, everyone is familiar with concept grammar. So basically what I want to do now is that once we have a context-free grammar and we have the grammar symbols, terminals or non-terminals, these grammar symbols I want to associate certain properties. Uh, at this point of time, let's not worry about what these properties are. Depending on what we are trying to do, these properties could be different. So for example, if I am trying to do type checking, so what I am talking about is now a more general framework. If I am trying to do type checking, then maybe I want to associate it type information. Okay. At some point of time when I start doing code generation in the later part of the compilation, then you will find that with certain attributes, with certain grammar symbols, I would like to associate information about where these symbols are stored. So I may say that I want to associate a register with this expression. I want to store this particular expression into a register or I want to store a variable into certain register. So attribute is really a generalized property which I am going to associate with each of the grammar symbols and remember that each grammar symbol can have more than one attribute. So it can have several properties, not just one. So this is really a generalization of context-free grammar where each symbol will have certain properties associated and as far as type checking is concerned, I would like to do certain computations. So in the previous class, if you recall towards the end, I was giving an example that if I am trying to parse, say, a type, a type declaration, and I want to then create a parse tree for the type declaration, then how do I compute values? How do I compute that when I encounter C, the type of the C is int, okay? And the kind of tree we created for this was that I will have an int here, and then I may have, so my rule may look something like saying that a type name followed by a list. Okay? This may be a rule and then I may say the list is nothing but it could be a left frequency rule. So it is list followed by uh, let's say identify. Okay? Uh, separated by com. Okay? So I could get something like this that I can say this is my type name. This is my list. Okay? So this is what my declaration is, and type name could be a type which is integer, this could be a list followed by comma, followed by an ID which I say C here, and then this again will be list followed by comma, followed by ID, and list could be, so let me have another rule which will say that list could be ID, and this could be ID here, and this is A. Okay? So this could be a pass before this type of declaration. And now when I am looking at, say, this particular node, I want to <coughs> associate this type here. Now, how do I carry this type here? I need to do certain computations. It could be a simple copy or it could be certain computations. So with this node, this node, and this node, these are the three nodes that I encounter. I want to make entries in the symbol table corresponding to these variables saying that type of these is P. Okay? And another example we had was that if we have uh, let's say some expression where I want to associate again certain type values with it. So if I have an expression like this where I say that E goes to let's say E plus E and this is my type expression and let's say that ID1 and ID2 have already been declared. So when they are declared, their values, their type information is available in the symbol table. Now, what is the type of E? 
they are wanting to do that computation. Because okay? I don't know whether this is going to be a valid type. So remember that somewhere I gave you an example where we said that A is assigned to B plus say or 2 where this was in and this was string. Okay? Now I want to find out whether this is a valid assignment or not. So first I must know that for a valid assignment both the types must be same or I should be able to automatically type cast it. But if the types have to be same, then type of B plus 2 must be same as int for this assignment to be valid. Now, how do I know type of B plus 2? So, I know type of B from symbol table, I know type of 2, okay? And then I'll have to do this computation to say that type of this, this particular operator may not be allowed on these kind of attributes, okay? So, this is how we are going to sort of build a type system where I am saying that I am now associating a value where I say that ID will have a type information with it. Similarly, ID2 will have a type and then this type information will be carried up in the tree. Similarly, I may say that type information here will be carried across the nodes. So, it may be carried from one part of the tree to another part or it may be carried from the child nodes to the parent nodes. So, values of attributes are going to be computed by the semantic rules and now you can see that semantic rules for this and semantic rules for this are going to be different. So you have to design these semantic rules okay? and there are two notations which are generally used. One is called synthesized attributes, another is called inherited attributes. So synthesized attributes as the name suggests is a situation where you say that attribute of a node in the parse tree depends upon the attributes of its children. So if I know attributes of the children node then I can do this computation. That is what synthesized means. An inherited attribute is a situation where we say that an attribute depends upon either the attribute of the parent or attribute of the siblings. Okay? So in this case, for example, I may say that attribute of this part of the tree depends upon attributes of this part of the tree, which happens to be sibling here. Okay? And attribute of this will depend upon attribute of this, which is coming from the parent. So we'll have two kinds of attributes associated, synthesized attributes and inherited attributes and also we'll have two notations associated with us. One is going to be pure specification which we are going to call as syntax directed definitions. In short, I'll show you what these specifications are. So these are only specifications and do not give you any details about how to implement. Okay? So this is just say that I have some specifications and then I want to implement it and implementation is going to be slightly different. Versus we have something known as translation themes, where not only we give specifications, but we also give an evaluation order. So for example, I may say here that in this case, if I say I have an attribute type, then I can always say, so let me now put some symbols on this. Okay? And now when I say E1 and E2, I am not saying these are two different non-terminals, what I am saying is these are two different occurrences of the same non-terminal. My non-terminal is still is E. So I may write a rule like saying that whenever I do, or do it on this part. So whenever I say that I have a rule which says E goes to ID, I have an attribute equation which says E type is nothing but ID type. Okay? And how do I know the ID type? How will I find out the ID type? In the declaration. So here, actually, ID type is nothing but I may say look up type information for ID. Okay? This is what ID type is. Because ID has already been declared, the type information has already been entered in the symbol table. And when I am trying to pass this expression, that time I will say E type is nothing but look up this. Okay? And then if I write something like this, which says E goes to E1 plus E or E goes to E1 plus E2. Now the reason I am writing 1 and 2 are so that I can say that I am talking about an attribute of this, this and this. These are three occurrences of the same symbol. So I may say that I may write some complex rule like saying that if E1 type is int and E2 type is int, then E type is int. Okay. So this is saying that if 
both the types are integer, then this is integer type, okay? And then I can enumerate it saying what are the possible combinations and then I may also have a situation where I say that E type is an incorrect type, it's an erroneous type. So for example, if I say E1 type is string and E2 type is const, then I'll say that it's an error. Then I'll say E type is an error type, okay? So that is how I'll be able to flag errors in my type system, okay? So these are really attribute equations I am writing. Now this doesn't tell you, if I look at these kind of specification, this is not telling you in which order I am doing evaluation. Okay, this is just saying that I have certain specifications. And at some point of time, we will have to worry about evaluation of this. So we will convert those into translation schemes and then use a parser to not only verify that your grammar is correct, but also to see that your types are correct. Same method can be used for code generation and so on. Beginning to make sense? And I gave you an example again from Yak in the previous class showing you that you have already done this. Okay? So if I go back to Yak, okay, you have certain dollar symbols associated with each of the grammar symbols here. Okay? So if I have dollar symbols, then what are the dollar symbols associated with these? So I had dollar dollar with this, dollar one, dollar two, and dollar three with this. Okay? So I can always and what are these dollar symbols? What is the type of this? What are the type of dollar? If we define in the YAC file, then it gets exported as for the code. No. Have you ever seen the code of y.5.c? It is an extra structure. It's a structure. And what is the type of the structure? <coughs> <laughs> it's a union and yes. members of different data types. Mm -hmm. It's a union. It's a union. So you can like us to anything you want. You just cannot say two structures. Good. So next time you ask a question, it has to be directed. That is the DNS, right? Just do the look up. So it's actually a union. Okay? So you can like us to anything. So if you recall now that sometimes when you try to associate, say, integer values with this, it actually gives you a warning, okay, saying that you are associating a wrong type. So unless you type cast first dollar dollar to eliminate those warnings, you keep giving me those warnings. In C, I mean, it's not an error, but you must know internals of your implementation also. Okay. So conceptually, both are really the same. Okay, only implementation are different. Okay, but the intention is that. As I am, so conceptually one way to look at this is that first I want to parse my expression or parse my program and once I have constructed the parse tree, then I want to traverse the parse tree and compute this information. So for example, here I will say that my parse tree is going to be something like and once I have created this parse tree, then I will say that if I now traverse it and doesn't matter in which order, I can let's say traverse it at any order. Okay? and multiple times. Then I will say that if I know type of this, if I know type of this, what is the rule of computation of type of this? So I will have these kind of rules <coughs> associated with it. Okay? It's not giving me any evaluation order. It's not giving me any order in which I want to translate. But ultimately the goal is going to be that ideally if I can construct parse tree and at the same time I keep on computing my attributes, that will save me multiple passes. Okay? So I will try to write my attributes in a fashion that I can do it as I am parsing and then we should be able to see that that will immediately lead to translation scheme because then I am saying that this is the order in which I build my parse tree and therefore this is the order in which I should compute my attributes. Okay. So we want to now traverse the parse tree to evaluate these semantic rules but please also remember that that is only a wish it is possible in some situations that I may not be able to do it in as I am computing my parse tree, as I am building my parse tree. It is also possible that I may have to have multiple passes over this parse tree before I can do this computation. Okay? So all those situations are possible. So evaluation of these attribute equations, it can either generate code, it can save information in the symbol table. So for example, if I am parsing this, I am trying to save information in the symbol table. If I am parsing this and I find the types are not same, so I may issue an error message. Okay? I can perform any other activity. Okay? I so basically what we are talking about is now a framework on top of context-free grammars which is going to be used for implementation of rest of the phases of compilation. Any questions? <coughs> okay. 
So let's move on. So here is a small example. Okay. So what I'm showing you is a grammar. Okay. And what is this grammar? This is only saying that I have a number. And the number is can be a sign number. And sign could be plus or minus, nothing else. And then followed by a list. And list is nothing but a list of zeros and ones. Okay. I have a binary number, which is either plus or minus. Okay. And what do I want to do? I want to now write some attribute grammar, which is going to annotate number with value it represents. So for example, if I write something like, so if I say number is the minus, minus 1, 0, 1, okay? then if I pass this using the grammar here, I will get the pass tree like this. It will say number is nothing but a sign and list and sign is going to be minus and list you can see this is a left recursive rule. So this will give me list as list followed by a bit and this bit will be 1, this will be again a list followed by a bit, this bit will be 0 and this list will give me a bit which will be 1. Okay? This is how the pass is going to look. Okay? And now what I want to do is I want to associate value saying if I look at this particular node then what is the value of the tree below it. Okay? And finally I want to find the value of this particular number, let's say in decimal. Okay. Now, if I ask you to convert this binary to decimal, how will you do it? What is the algorithm you use? Place value, right? Okay. So we said this is the rightmost bit, so the place value associated with this is 2, points, 2 to power 0, is 2 to power 1, 2 to power 2, okay, and then add up everything. Right? So I must know position of each bit before I can compute this. Okay? Now same thing I must compute here. I must know positions of each bit. Okay? Now how will I do that? So now let's see that can I write rules <coughs> such that somehow given this sparse tree and given certain rules which are associated with each of the nodes, I can find out the decimal value of this. So is intent clear for what I am trying to do? Okay. So if I say that with number, I have, let's say, an attribute associated value. Okay. Okay. And finally, I want to say value is minus 5. Is this what it is? 2 to power 0, 1, and 4. Yeah. So that gives me 5. Okay. So this is what I want. Okay. Now tell me what are the rules I should write so that I can do this computation that when I finish this, when I do this, when I evaluate all my rules, the value of this particular vari variable will be minus 5. To think about it, so let's say what is the position of this bit? This position 0, okay. Now, how do I get this position 0? So if I say that to begin with, whenever I am parsing, okay, and as I said at this point of time, I don't care about the order of evaluation, I just want to write pure attribute equations. Okay. I can say that whenever I start creating this tree, and it doesn't matter now whether I am creating it top down or bottom up, okay, because I can have multiple passes over it, that as soon as I start reading this number, I say that when position, let's say position is defined as, so position is now an attribute which is initialized to 0. Okay. And if I say that I have this attribute with number which is position, then I can say that list is a position. So list position is, so the way I am going to do it now, I will say that for attribute of this name list, I will have the same grammar symbol followed by the attribute name because I can have multiple attributes. So I will now say that list position <coughs> is nothing but let us say number position. Okay. So this will get me value of this value which is 0. Okay. Now I can say bit position is <coughs> bit position is let us say list position. That will also take me 0 and then I can say that this gives me position 0. And then once I know the position, what will I do? 
And then I know standard technique, I'll multiply it with power of 2, okay, 2 to the power of that position. Okay. But here, I must take this position as 1, and here this position should be 2. Right? So now I can root, write a rule here which says that when I'm looking at this list position, I can say list position is nothing but, so let me call this attribute and this attribute, but a different name, so let me call it list1, so that I can say now list1 position is nothing but list position plus 1. Okay? And then if I now look at this, so bit position is nothing but list position, so it will get value 1 here. And what about this? Again, the same rule will apply here, which will take now value 2, and then I can say that this bit takes value 2. Right? So by starting this, I can write rules. Now you can see that if I take this subtree or this subtree, as long as my grammar rule is the same, my attribute equation is the same. No, some people are nodding their heads, but I can see a lot of blank faces also. Are you understanding I mean, what I am doing here or not? <coughs> Somebody who doesn't understand what I have done there? So let me write it slightly differently. Okay. <coughs> let me write this grammar. Okay. And here I am saying number is find the list. And sign is plus or minus, and list is list followed by bit, or list is followed by bit, and then I say bit is either 0 or 1. This is what my gram is. Okay. Now, suppose I say that, so let's not worry about sign for the time being. Okay. Sign I will see later. Okay. Suppose I say to begin with here, okay, I say that now I am writing certain rules with this. Okay. So this is my grammar and I am going to add rules to this. So if I say my rule is something like this, where I say that list P is let us say initialized to 0. Okay. Or I can say it is number dot position, but let me say it is initialized to 0. That is the rule which is associated with this particular grammar rule. So this is an attribute equation associated with this grammar rule. And then I say, when it comes to this particular grammar rule, I say that bit position, so let, let me now differentiate between this list and this list by saying this is list 1. Okay? So now I say that bit position is list position and list 1 position is list position plus 1. This is the rule I have. Okay. And here I say that bit position is nothing but this position. Okay. And then I say that when I am coming to this, okay, let me say that bit well, so now I have to compute the value. Okay. What is the bit value here? <coughs> 0 will always give me 0, doesn't matter where it occurs. So position is not important. Only when the bit is 1, then the position is important, right? So I can always say bit value is 0, and here I can say that bit value is 2 to power bit position. Okay. So now this is telling me that if I reach the <coughs> bit which is at the leaf level, then I can look at contribution of, of each of the bits. If it is 0, it doesn't contribute anything. If it is 1, then it contributes corresponding to where it occurs. Okay? But then, I need to know what is the value of the number. So I need to take this information back. Okay? And that is where I say that if I am reducing by this rule, then I can say what is the list value. nothing but bit value. Whatever is coming, whatever is the value of this bit, okay, that is going to be the value which is copied here. Okay? So this is bit value. Okay? What about this? 
when I have a rule like this, what is the value of the list? Now, to compute this value, I must know this value and this value. Right? And I just need to add the two. Okay? So I can now say that list value is nothing but list one dot value plus bit value. Okay? And if I now want to find out what is the number value, <laughs> as I said, let's ignore sign for the time being. Okay? So what is the number value? List value. Right? So you can see that what I have are really specifications, which is telling me that how do I compute value of this number? Okay? I do not know in which order I am going to do the computation, but I'll find that out. Okay? Now let's do this. Okay? Suppose now I am also worried about the sign. Okay? So now I can say that in this case, so let me write now slightly different. So I have two signs. Okay? So now I can say that this is either positive or this is negative. Okay, so I can just use a boolean here and I can say that this is saying that sign well is true and this is saying that sign well is false. Okay, I can use any attributes I wish. Okay? And now this rule is going to change slightly and now I will say that number well What is number well? Now I can say if sign well is true, then what is the num well? Then I say num well is, let's say, sign list well, else it's minus list well. Right? So now I know that if I ever create a parse tree, using these grammar rules, and then I evaluate all these rules on my parse tree, I'll get value of the number. And as I said, at this point of time, I only have specifications. I don't care about in which order I'm evaluating these specifications. That we are going to do at some later point. Sir, how do you differentiate between list and list one? Oh, I don't. List one or new? No, no. So please, once again, okay. So list is the non-terminal I have. List one is just another occurrence of the same thing. I want to differentiate between attribute of this list and this list. Now, when it comes to implementation, okay, I already have a method which says that this attribute is dollar dollar and this is dollar one. Okay, so I'll be able to differentiate. When notationally I use here, I need some mechanisms, so I'm putting some subscripts. But this is not a new non-terminal. This is the same non term. Okay, similarly, when I wrote e going to e plus e, okay, I said e going to e1 plus e, because there were three e's and I wanted to have different e's. Okay, but non terminal is still the same e. Is this now beginning to make sense? Okay. So now if I use all these rules on this parse tree, you can see that in one top down parse, I am going to get all the bit values, bit positions and then in the bottom of parse I am going to get the bit values. Okay? So I can immediately see that this one is, if I start traversing from top, I will take this value 0, this value will reach here and then this 1 will reach here and 2 will reach here and then when I start traversing upwards from bottom up, this will say that value is 4 here, this will say value is 0, this will say value is 1, and when I add this, this will say that value is 4, this will say value is 1, and when I come here, this will say value is 5, and therefore this will say value is minus 5, okay, because of this sign. Yes? Okay. So, these are the symbols I am using, okay, just to reconstruct what we did that we have a number which is value, sign is negative, then I have position and value with list and bits. Okay? And this is how the parse tree will look, but if I put now rules in this, this will say that this negative is true, okay, so here I took positive as true, in the example I have negative as true, doesn't matter, it's just a boolean value. Okay? And here this says position is 0, and this will copy the position here, okay? 
which will say that in this case position becomes 1, okay, because I am now using a rule which says list close to list followed by bit, which is this rule, okay, and then this position 1 will get carried to this, okay, and then this position 2 will get carried to this, and this will also then get position 2, and now I will cons start constructing the value, so this will give me value 4, looking at the bit value and the position, this gives me 4, and this 4 is then carried upwards, and then for this part again, value will be 0, because of this position is immaterial, this gives me value 0, and this therefore says that value associated with this list is going to be this plus this value, which is 4, and on this part value will be 1, and then this list will get value 5, and number therefore will get value minus 5. Okay. Now instead of these numbers, I could have a type information. Okay. So as I said, this is a general matter which says that if I have certain properties with these nodes, then how do I compute certain other properties with of some other nodes. And what I am using here, I am using a combination of synthesized attributes and inherited attributes. Okay. In some cases, I, I can see that this value, whatever I have put in green, is actually a synthesized attribute because it is defined in terms of its parent no, uh, children nodes and whatever you see in red is actually coming from the parent and these are the inherited attributes. You can inherit certain properties or you can <coughs> synthesize certain properties. Okay. So, now <coughs> this is, okay. So, now there are two things. Okay. One is the parse tree which you see in black color and then you have all this blue, green, red which is the dependence graph which is saying that this evaluation must be done in certain order. Now, the orders of construction of parse tree and evaluation of all these attribute equations may not match at this point of time. And as I said, at this point of time, I don't even care about that because I am only writing certain properties and not worried about the evaluation order. Okay? But at some point of time, we will have to worry about this. Okay? So, if this is what my grammar is, okay, this is how my <coughs> rules are going to be that list position is going to be 0. So, this is just replication of that. This says sine negative, sign negative is false. This says sign negative is true, and this says bit position is nothing but list position. This is saying list position is nothing but list zero position plus one, and this is saying bit position is nothing but list zero position. Okay, and here bit value is zero, and here bit value is two to power bit position. And then I start taking these values up. So here I will say that list value is nothing but <coughs> list one value plus bit value. And this will say list value is nothing but bit value, and here it will say that if sign is negative, then the value is negative list value, otherwise it's positive. Okay. So you can see that I already have some kind of attribute grammar and at least a way of evaluation of attribute equations. Okay. Now let's take another example. So attributes, I already discussed this, they fall in two classes. One is synthesized attribute and another is inherited attribute. And synthesized attribute is something which is computed from value of the children nodes and inherited attributes which are computed in terms of the attributes of the sibling and the parents. Okay. That is something what is inherited. Okay. The standard English words. Okay. So now we'll start putting this in slightly formal notation. Okay. So what we are saying now is that suppose I have a production of the form A goes to L form. Okay. And then with this I can associate a set of symmetric rules. Now, I need not have just one rule, I can have multiple rules. So, you can see that for example here, with this particular grammar rule, I have two rules associated, or three rules, which says bit position is list position, this says list position is list position plus one, and this says list value is list value plus bit value. Okay, so, I have three rules associated with the same grammar rule. Okay. So, in general, I can say that my rule is going to be of this form, where I say I am trying to compute B, which is a function of attributes C1 to C. Okay. Now, it does not matter whether it is synthesized or inherited. If it is synthesized attribute, so if this is synthesized attribute, then C1 to CK are attributes of the children node of B. Or if this is inherited attribute of the grammar symbol on the right hand side, then what it means is that C1 to CK are attributes of the parent node and the siblings. Right. So, attributes what we have to remember here is that this attribute depends upon attribute C1 to CK. So, I cannot compute B before I have computed C1 to CK. So, 
looking at this, I for example cannot compute width position without knowing the list position. I cannot compute list one position without knowing the list position. And I cannot compute list value without knowing the list one value and bit value. Okay? So I need to make sure that as far as my dependence graph is concerned, that's a directed graph, and I only compute my attributes in the order that no none of the edges get violated there. Okay? That order is strictly fulfilled. And I will also assume at this point of time that we do not have cyclic dependencies. Okay? Because that makes life a lot simpler. If you do not have cyclic dependencies, that, then what is going to be the property of the dependence graph you have? Can you, for example, on a dependence graph which does not have cycles, okay, can you do a sorting on that? Can you sort that graph and find out the validation order? It will not give you a total order, but it will give you a partial order. right? So if I do a topological sort on that, then I know what my partial order of evaluation is. Right? So for example, again, once going back to that figure once again. So if I know that I can compute these in certain order, then you know that if every time I am computing something where all it depends upon have already been computed, then I have no problem. The order within that is not important. So, for example, whether I compute this value first or this value first, that is not important. As long as before this computation, I have computed both of them. So, this is like saying that if E goes to E1 plus or E1 plus E2, doesn't matter whether I compute E1 first or E2 first. Okay? As long as I have computed both of them, then I can compute E1. Okay? Of course, at some point of time, we are going to impose certain constraints on that and say that I want to evaluate it in certain order because I am constructing my opacity from left to right, I am standing for my input from left to right and therefore I am going to put certain constraints on that. Okay? So continuing on this, okay, we have two kinds of attributes. Okay? And so let us look at a synthesized attribute. And synthesized attributes are actually much simpler. Okay? So these are also called as attributed definitions. If we say that all my attribute equations are such that I use only synthesized attributes, then these are as attributed definitions and a parse tree can be annotated by just looking at the semantic rules and then I can say that for each node I can annotate it with one of the semantic rules and what will be the natural parsing method for construction of a dependence graph for a synthesized attribute? Bottom up parser, right? If I construct a bottom up parser and I have only synthesized attributes then I know that as I am constructing my nodes the nodes below it have already been constructed and I can keep on computing and finally when I reach the root node, by then I have computed everything. Right? Okay. So here is an example okay, which is coming from the desk calculator example. Okay. Now, there are many calculators. So this is actually a program in C. You can use binary calculator. But then there were also calculators like where I could type an expression and when I finish typing an expression, it gives me the value of the expression, right? This is, I mean, if you take any calculator, what do you type? You're typing an infix expression, right? And when you press return, it gives you the value of that expression. Internally, how does it work? Internally, what it is doing is nothing but parsing your input. Okay? So suppose this is the grammar I'm using for parsing my input. It says that when I press return, okay, so n is saying new line or return, then l gives me the value of this expression. And my expression grammar still remains e goes to e plus t, t go, e goes to t, t goes to t star f, t goes to f, f is bracketed expression or f is a digit. Okay. So what kind of rules I'm going to write for this? So suppose I say that I just want to make sure that when I finish typing my expression and press return, <coughs> value of this expression is printed on the screen. Okay. So as I see digits and I, as I see <coughs> operators, I must be able to compute all the values which are associated with each of the sub-expressions. So for example, if I take now some expression okay, which is passed by this particular language, so let's say that I am trying to compute say 4 star 5 plus 3, some random, random expression. Okay. What is the kind of parse tree I will construct for this? Okay. So you say that L is nothing but an expression followed by new line and then I want to clearly say that L well here is nothing but E well. 
Then that is what I want to print. Or I can simply write it in terms of saying that here, instead of just copying it, okay, I can just say that print even at all this. Okay. But if I now look at this part, okay, and now you can see that what kind of pass tree I'll get from this. Okay. What is this giving me? 4 star 5, this will give me T star F. Okay. T star F will get reduced to T and T will get reduced to E. Right? So this is how it will come. <coughs> so ID I am assuming are numbers here. This part of the pass tree will look something like this and this part of the pass tree will look E is going to be so, uh, so T and actually I should have had one more E here basically, E plus T and this T is going to F and F going to ID which gives me 3. Hmm? Now if I have to write all these rules, okay, what is, if I say my value or attribute that is associated with is just the value attribute, only one attribute with every grammar symbol. Then what will I say, what is the val value here? 4. But I need to write a rule. I cannot just say that when I reduce by saying f goes to digit, okay, it's 4. So what is the rule I write, which is a more general rule? So whatever is the value of the digit. So I can say that val is nothing but here digit val. Okay. That becomes my general rule. Okay. So same rule will apply here, here and here, which will say that value of f is nothing but digit well and when this rule is used which says t goes to f then I will say that what is t well? f well, right. So it is just popping so whenever I do a reduction by this rule this says that t well is nothing but f well and what is the rule I write for this when this says t goes to t star f, okay. So what is t well? t well is equal to? T well star F well. Only one small problem that I do not know what this T well is, okay, because these are two T wells occurring. So I need to make sure that I use some subscripts here to differentiate between them, and therefore I say that this is T1 and therefore this is T1 well. Okay, and similarly I can now say that when T goes to T, I'll say that E well is T well and so on, okay. So this way I can very quickly create all my rules and what I am saying here is that f well is nothing but whatever is value of the digit then f well is e well and t well is f well and this is saying t well is t well plus f well and this is saying e well is t well and e well is this okay? and terminals which are associated have only synthesized attributes and value which are supplied by the lexical analyzers. So for example, this is a terminal, this is a terminal, this is a terminal, these values are going to come only from the lexical analyzer. Okay. So this is how my pass tree will look and then I can do all the computations of these values. Okay. Oh, so I had a different expression here, but doesn't matter. Right. So basically what has to be clear to you is that given a grammar and given a problem to be solved now. Okay. So now I am <coughs> posing several problems. Okay. One problem I posed was that given a binary number, a sign binary number, how do I find the equivalent decimal number? Okay. Or given an expression, how do I find value of the expression? Or given a type, how do I find type of each of the variables? These are different problems and for each problem I should know how to write my attribute equations, my grammar will remain the same. Okay. So using the same grammar, same parsing technique, I can solve different problems. Yes. Yeah. 